Let's talk about creating inlays in wood using the CNC router. I'm Dave Van Antwerp. An inlay is where one piece of wood is inserted into another piece of wood, usually in a particular shape and in a contrasting color. Inlays can be created in shapes or simply decorative. There is no limit to the designs that can be created using inlays. Most of the inlays shown here are either walnut on maple or maple on walnut. Using the CNC router we can do very precise work displaying intricate shapes. Bill Chapman and I are simply hobbyists and friends who enjoy working with wood. We find inlays particularly interesting. We are reasonably successful at doing them so we have had many requests to share the techniques that work so well for us. Our project today is a maple cutting board featuring a walnut inlay showing a hummingbird and a flower. We chose this project as a challenge because it has fine lines and sharp corners. We will be using the software program VCarve Pro or Aspire to create the inlay. We start by creating the female pocket for the inlay. This is a VCarve inlay so it will be a VCarve toolpath. For the female pocket of the inlay there are two critical numbers. The start depth is zero. We are starting our V groove at the surface of the cutting board. The flat depth is 0.2 inches. That is as deep as we want to go. Bill and I have written those two numbers on our work tables. Start depth is zero, flat depth 0.2 inches for the female pocket. Then we edit the tool path for the V-bit to make the pass depth 0.2 so it cuts in one smooth pass instead of leaving a ridge between passes. We select the appropriate flat depth tool and finally we double check the other settings and hit calculate. Checking the preview it looks right. We didn't leave any vectors out. We are ready to cut the female pocket. Lots of V-bits will work for inlays. Bill and I prefer a 1 quarter inch 60 degree V-bit. We most often use the white side 1541. It's solid carbide so it stays sharp a long time. It's long enough that we can clear our hold downs and it's relatively inexpensive. When we mount the workpiece on the table we check several things. First it's important that the workpiece be absolutely flat. If it's been a couple days since we last sanded the workpiece, we scribble pencil marks across it and sand again. We make sure the workpiece is square on the table. And then we use several hold downs to secure the workpiece. If the workpiece moves even a tiny bit during the cut, the inlay won't fit. It must be secure. Now we cut the female pocket. Next we create the tool path for the male inlay. Here are the critical steps. First we copy the female pocket to a new file. Then flip it horizontally using the mirror tool in VCarve Pro or Aspire. The male inlay must be a mirror image to the female pocket. Next we draw a box or a border around the male inlay. The purpose is to leave the image raised and cut away everything else. We group all the vectors. Then we set up the VCarve toolpath. The numbers are different for the male inlay. The start depth needs to be 0.1. The flat depth also needs to be 0.1. We don't quite understand why this works, but it does. Probably because 0.1 plus 0.1 equals 0.2, which is the depth of the female pocket. But we don't try to figure it out. It works. Start depth is 0.1. Flat depth is 0.1 inch for the male inlay. We have also written those two numbers on our work tables. We edit the V-carve toolpath to a pass depth of 0.2 inch, so we get a nice smooth cut to match the female pocket. We select the appropriate tool to cut the flat depth. We double check the other settings and then we hit calculate. We double check the preview to see if we left anything out. Then we carve the male inlay. The tool path should leave ridges that will match the grooves in the female pocket and carve away the remaining material around those ridges. When the cut is complete it's time to trim off the excess material from the male inlay. It's easy to just draw a rectangle around the design and carve it all away, but it takes more machine time. So we draw an irregular line around the design, leaving just enough room for the flat area tool to get around all the ridges. Then we trim away the excess material on the workpiece, except for the parts that need to be glued together. Before applying glue, we lay the male inlay next to the female pocket and then flip it over to see if it fits. If we did everything right, it should settle right in with a nice snapping sound. It's a good feeling when that happens. There should be a space between the two pieces when they are placed in position. Now it's time to do the glue up. 
We apply glue to both pieces making sure that all the mating surfaces have glue on them. It's easy to miss a few spots so we use glue brushes to get into all the nooks and crannies. With glue applied we put as many clamps on as possible. It's important to keep the top piece parallel to the bottom piece and to apply clamping pressure evenly. We like to use parallel clamps but other kinds of clamps could be used too. Whatever works the glue needs to be dry at least an hour or two, but we usually leave the work pieces in the clamps overnight just to be safe. After removing the clamps, it's time to remove the male inlay. Bill is more coordinated than I am, so he cuts the excess material off using the bandsaw with the blade positioned carefully between the two halves. I am always afraid I'll go off course with the bandsaw blade and do some damage that I can't sand out. I mount the workpiece flat on the CNC table and use a half inch end mill in a pocket tool path to mill away the male inlay material that isn't needed. Either way, a small amount of cleanup needs to be done to remove traces of excess wood and glue. We run the workpiece through the drum sander at 100 grit in very small increments until we get close to the final result. Then we switch to a handheld random orbit sander, first with 150 grit and then 220 grit until the inlay looks good and no traces of glue remain. We exercise utmost caution when sanding. It's very easy to over sand and remove some of the inlay. Sanding down to the correct level is good. Sanding too far is bad. It ruins the project. This project is a cutting board, so we round the corners on the disc sander. Then we round the edges on the router table using a roundover bit. Finally, we go around all the corners and the edges sanding by hand with 220 grit sandpaper. The last step for the cutting board project is to apply the finish. We use food grade mineral oil available as cutting board oil or butcher block oil. Three coats does a really nice job. Often we will wet sand between coats with 1000 grit wet dry sandpaper or 4 aught steel wool with a liberal coating of oil on the surface while sanding very lightly. Very lightly. At this point the project is complete. It's time to stand back so we can ooh and ah for a moment and pat ourselves on the back for another inlay job well done.